Call the order of the uh, January monthly meeting of the Scarborough Sanitary <coughs> District. Uh, we'll uh, start with the roll call. Charles Andresen? Here. Dave Nelson? Here. Nick Rico? Here. Jason Greenleaf? Here. Rob McSorley? Present. Seth Garland? I mean, uh, Gar Garrison? <laughs> Here. <laughs> it's been a few years, huh? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm Ben Viola. Uh, First order of business here is uh, well, I know Dave Hughes and Wendy Fraser. Um, <clears throat> so approval of the minutes from the November, no, wait, so moved. December, December meeting. Seconded. Any corrections, uh, Mr. Chairman? Page five, bottom of the page. There was a motion, but there was no vote recorded. Well. I actually called Win Wendy on that, and she. What happened? That it didn't get it recorded, but we didn't actually take a, a vote on that. We oh, just we uh, it was decided that we didn't a vote wasn't necessary. To, our motion wasn't necessary to set up a workshop, and we just said we'd set up a workshop. Okay. And it was going to be for the February meeting before the February meeting, but since then, Unitil is uh, canceled. canceled, and we're going to set that up sometime in the future. Anything else? <coughs> Okay, so so that's going to read the board agreed to schedule a workshop. What's that? So you can take the motion part out of that and just say the board agreed to schedule a workshop on February 25th. Yes, that's what we're going to do on that. Which has been rescheduled now. Which has been rescheduled. <laughs> <laughs> so all in favor of approval? 100%. Okay. So next thing, what's my agenda here? Uh, Superintendent's operations report. Uh, a copy of the monthly report of operations for the month of December is included in your packet. Our average effluent flow for the month was 1.26 million gallons a day. Our effluent quality was well within our permitted limits. We averaged 96% uh, BOD removal and 98% total suspended solids removal. And the uh, effluent concentrations for those are 11 milligrams per liter and seven milligrams per liter respectfully. Attached also is the summary of our operations for the past year. Um, last year we treated a total of uh, 455.4 million gallons of wastewater for the, for the year. Uh, as compared to 500 million gallons the year before and 429 for the year prior to that. Uh, overall, we removed 95% of for, uh, the BOD that came through the plant and 98% of the total suspended solids that came through the plant. I've attached the, uh, also the solid waste compost uh, annual report, um, which is a summary of our composting operation. Last year, we generated uh, 4,251 cubic yards of compost. In 2014, we um, generated 3,072. Uh, uh, in 2014, in 2013, we generated 3,044 cubic yards. In 2012, it was 3,392 yards. Uh, this past year, there were a total of 13 events of plugged pumps at our pump stations, which is uh, consistent with um, Last year, although eight of the events were noted to be caused uh, by whites, five of which occurred at one pump station, pump station number 20, Evergreen Farms. Uh, in June, I had met with the nursing home and I reported on this back then um, and uh, discussed the issue at that pump station. And since that time, we have not had a plug pump at that station. So. Um, I believe that the increase in the number that is caused by wipes is actually more of a recognition for, of our mechanics uh, with regards to, the, to what they are looking for versus an increase in plug pumps as a result of wipes. So we've changed it. Instead of waiting till the very end, if you have something you want to ask the superintendent at the end of each item, we should probably talk about it then versus waiting till the... Mm -hmm. That's the case, Mr. Chairman. May I ask a question sure. about the solid waste compost? 
You may. It looks like we did about 30, we created 30% more compost, 30% more this year, or 2015 versus the three previous years. I'm wondering, is it because of a more efficient process that you're using? Some of, some of that is. Uh, the more you take out, the more you Can generate. Mm -hmm. um, also, you, you get some carryover <coughs> uh, from previous years. You might get a pile that pile of two that was generated in 2013 versus uh, uh, 2014 that was actually recorded in 2015. Okay. So it's a combination of the two. Okay, moving on. Uh, pump station flues. A copy of the pump station flues for the month of December is included in your packet. There are some erroneous flues at Pine Point Pump Station. We're looking into the cause. Um, <coughs> we also had some high flues at the Industrial Park Pump Station. This is an area that we're targeting for some CCTV work this coming spring. Pump station number two generator. We received four quotes for the replacement of the generator. Pump station number two. As you recall, the existing generator is over 30 years old and parts are no longer available for it. Uh, these quotes were for a 100 kilowatt generator with a sub-base fuel tank and a weather housing. The new generator will be located on an existing concrete pad behind pump station number two's uh, building. The existing unit is located within the building. Uh, we went with an outside unit for several reasons, the primary one being it's more cost effective to install an outside unit. Uh, the lowest quote was from Kohler Power Systems Generator for an amount of $25,400. This is a budgeted item with a total cost uh, budgeted of $42,000. The quotes were received for the equipment only. Um, I have executed the purchase order for the Kohler Generator. A summary of the four quotes follows. Kohler was $25,400. Generac Power Systems was $25,441.90. Cummings Power Systems was $28,560. And Milton Cat was $35,836. Any question? Yep. So are we required to take the low bid? We are not. We're not required. But uh, in this case here, um, the uh, Cola Power System meets all of our, de uh, our all of our needs, and our mechanics are more than happy with the, the choice. Okay. So, were the bid offerings similar in terms of features on yes. each of the generators? Yep. yep. We have we have put together a fairly detailed spec for them to uh, coordinate. Okay. Uh, pump station number six and pellets. The pellets in pump station six were installed during the installation. The mechanic noted that two of the pumps vibrated more than the other two and was feeling that the, uh, all the pumps are cavitating under high flow conditions. I had, take them, I had him take some suction and discharge pressure gauge readings and we did get some readings that caused concern. Two pumps have a much higher um, suction um, reading than the other two. Um, uh, we have reached out to Smith and Loveless to help us evaluate our findings. So this is go going to be an ongoing investigation for us right now. I don't Which one's pump station six, David? The, uh, the large one on uh, Old Metro. Oh, okay. I have a question. Do you have a vibration meter? We do not. I, I don't know what the cost is of those. It might be cost prohibitive, but you might want to take a look at that. I know a lot of folks have a regular habit of taking vibration analysis on their pumps just mm -hmm. so that they can trend it and see if there's any kind of a problem. I can, um, I'll have my mechanic look into that. And if uh, they are prohibitive, I'll also look out, reach out to see what it can to have a second party come in and do it. Uh, the administration building painting, uh, we started with the painting of the admin building interior. The front lobby is now complete as well as several offices. We should be finishing up this painting this month. It's starting to look really nice. It really needed, it needed the freshening up. Um, online payment options and paperless building, billing. Uh, we are currently reviewing billing software options, which will include online payment and paperless billing. billing. Wendy and I attended an, a, um, an online presentation on um, uh, online payment for our current um, uh, software package uh, that's been 
uh, we're still evaluating other options. So, uh, Fournier Sludge Press, uh, we conducted the, uh, some prescribed schedule maintenance during which we discovered some excessive corrosion. Uh, we contacted Fournier Industries who provided a service technician to evaluate and we'll be providing some recommendations. Um, depending on the finding, this could be a significant repair or even requiring replacement. Uh, the needed work or replacement is probably at least five years off though. It's just something that we can budget for, but it's uh, of value enough that it, uh, I wanted to bring it to our, your attention. Question? Go ahead. Is this part of the mechanical equipment or is this the framing of the equipment? Um, it's, you know, it's, is, it, is it common at this point to be seeing that? Uh, it's part of the mechanical equipment. Uh, whether it's common or not, I don't know. Uh, there are several other Fournier presses in the area, but none of them have aged, uh, reached this age. And the ones of similar age have actually been replaced uh, for other reasons. Uh, at other facilities. They, they went through an upgrade and chose that upgrade to replace their, their Fournier presses. So they have a newer model than we do. Uh, some of the parts and pieces have been replaced with uh, fiberglass components. Um, and so um, then I don't think the newer ones are seeing this degradation. But yeah, how, how, how old are they? They're approaching, they're at least years. 12 years old. Yeah. You know, uh, I mean, 20 years is really probably your your planning period for that type of piece of equipment. It's not that far off. You know, if we get another five years out of them, but it is, it's just something that you know, um, it, it was surprised. The mechanic was surprised to see it. Question for you: um, Was the press designed based upon our potential flows? And have we hit those? Would we typically, I would assume if we had twice the amount of flow, we'd be producing twice as much sludge and there would be a more wear. Is it's this not wear, well, it's not wear as a well, result of running, it's wear as a result of corrosion. Okay. So I don't think it has anything to do with the operation because the, the prescribed maintenance, scheduled maintenance that it was doing, he took the unit apart to adjust some of the uh, internal scrapers and they hadn't even reached uh, a need to be replaced. He just put the thing, whole thing back together. Um, you know, so the, the, the operational wear on the units is mm -hmm. far below mm -hmm. where we are. So. so Fournier is replacing these parts with, with fiberglass non-corrosion parts now, so they've recognized that they have a I'll call it a defect for lack of a time to think of a better word. Yeah. Uh, so they've recognized the need to improve their design. I wonder if they'd give us some consideration. Might be a good timing to press them a little bit to see whether or not we could get some consideration for repair work that would get us out beyond five more years. I'll, I'll work on them on that. Thank you, David. Mm -hmm. Uh, sewering west of the Turnpike on the 20th of January. Um, the chairman and I met with the town manager and uh, planning department staff to discuss the proposed sewering of the west of the Turnpike. We reviewed the four options and discussed and reviewed roles and uh, expectations as the project mat matures. Uh, we also discussed the status of the engineering study, engineering options, capacity charges, available capacity, and downstream impacts. The town manager did ask if we could would attend a workshop with the town councilors to further discuss this project, and, um, and I, I certainly will be available for that. As we move forward, we will be developing a memorandum of understanding between the town and the district, and we'll uh, that will clearly define these roles and responsibilities. So I had a question on that. I thought we were going to have a joint town hall. Uh, Town Council trustee meeting. Was I wrong about that? Uh, it was. My recollection was described as a workshop between the yeah yeah between the two two boards. Yeah. 
It was a good. It was actually a very good meeting, and um, <clears throat> we laid out what we could do for them, and we, ours would be more or less uh, technical assistance with it versus uh, uh, funding of, of any kind because we just don't have the, the money for that. Did they give you an updated date when they expect to present their findings? Uh, right now, uh, no. They're, right now, they're actually waiting on me. Um, I am uh, correlating and, and getting together some of the um, um, data with regards to flow allotment to existing parcels, such that we they can evaluate the capacity of the sewer system. It, it's become a little bit of a, a um, uh, much larger task than I in initially anticipated, so it's taken me longer mm -hmm. to, to finish up. I did volunteer a day's time as much as, much as they needed. <laughs> You're so generous, I, I think then. Dave even mentioned working weekends, I think, didn't you? <laughs> no, you did, though. <laughs> 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 okay, so anyway. Ben did say he was going to help you on that, right? Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, I had a question about the four options. In those four options, how many pump stations were proposed? Um, trying to remember off the top of my head, I think there was a maximum. One option may have had as up, up to three pump stations. There was one with two, and I believe they're the, uh, the one they're moving forward with, is, uh, likely moving forward with, is has one. And that would be, be that a would public station public that station we would take that would over? Public would take over, correct. Right. Adding our number back up to 23. Yeah, but the problem was that as you go across, it goes uphill, and then it goes back down on the other side. And whether you need a pump station on the other side to gather and pump it over to the other pump station, we didn't know if you could get by. You don't want to put these things. Uh, Eight Corners is a good example of putting things deep in the ground <laughs> to uh, to uh, to maintain. Are we going to get an estimate, Dave, of the anticipated operating costs of this new system and how it's going to be built and what the implications will be for the district with regard to budgetary issues? And I guess my question would be, is this going to be a cost to the ratepayers in the short term for this expansion to take place? And is that something that we're going to have to factor into our into our discussions? Um, I guess the, the, the cost of operation, I haven't had that discussion with them yet um, with regards to the short term operation until users get on the system. Um, I think it might be premature. Yeah, I think They're going to put together a facilities plan for this before we, we, we go ahead. So we haven't got the, the facilities report done or the, you know, the study done yet. Mm -hmm. or, to find out what's what's planning ahead um, until we get that, I don't know if we can really put, put a lot of those numbers together. It's something that we certainly can make sure they include in their analysis. And uh, I hadn't really. Well, I'm, I'm. I guess I'm just wondering if um, if this is liable to be a negotiation between us and the town as far as the options that get selected. Um, what our preferences might be uh, system-wise versus what they're proposing um, that before we have a joint meeting with the town council and this town manager that we probably ought to meet ourselves and kind of go over with you all the various issues from the district's perspective that this project raises for us both through design, construction, and then operation so that if, this, if there are issues that we think we need to negotiate for that we're in a position to do that and that we're not just flying uh, intuitively sitting at a meeting and coming up with things as, as we go. So I, I I think I'd suggest probably an executive session at some time when you think it's prudent, I guess, uh, in yep. the timeline of how this is developing, that we meet in an executive session and really talk about the nuts and bolts of everything that's happening here and 
how it may affect us and whether there's a issue of a negotiation that we might be dealing with or or not. I'm, I can just see different ways this scenario could could play out that uh, our interests may be secondary to their interests in terms of the design part of this. They may make they may have construction preferences that are based totally on their costs, passing those over to us, and it could be it could be longer term higher maintenance demands on our facilities. And I think we need to be able to factor that kind of stuff into um, our discussions that we have mm -hmm. jointly with them as to how that's going to happen. So once once the uh, what I foresee is once the uh, um, the study is complete. Probably at that point in time, uh, workshop, district workshop, uh, or executive session to review it is probably prudent. But not until I wouldn't think prior to that would be uh, worthwhile. Yeah, I think that whatever timeline you think will be productive mm -hmm. would be would be good. And until you've got something just design-wise to sink your teeth into. You'll just be uh, guessing, you know, what issues might be. But I just think, from the from one side of the table, getting it designed and built as cheaply as possible from the town side may not. We talked about that. May <laughs> not. Uh, yeah, that came up. So I think there was we were, we were looking for that facilities plan before we have the the meeting, and then at that point we don't they don't have an engineer yet. They they have an engineer for doing the facilities plan, but that's not might not necessarily be the engineer that actually does the does the uh, design and uh, and uh, actual construction part of it. I I threw out that you probably want to use the same engineer. I don't know what everyone's feelings, and I don't want to go too much into it, but you probably should have the same engineer that does the design do the construction end of it. So you, you keep it keep it with one versus finger pointing, but trying to get two in there. So uh, but but at this point. Anybody can do that the facilities plan, and then we would we'd have an input into hiring the engineer for the for the design and construction. So uh, yeah, we everything's still wide open. We haven't we did make bring up the fact that you know sometimes it's easier to you know it's less costly to build one thing, and then but it's more expensive to operate later on, and uh, you know that wouldn't you know we we'd have some input into that as well. So we, we did cover that. We covered quite a bit and uh, so there's a difference between the staff understanding that and the town council oh, understanding yeah, that yeah, yeah and if you recall uh, I think you were at the meeting that we had uh, I'm not sure when we did the eight corners project probably not not eight corners uh, but we had a, we had a sit-down meeting between the board of trustees and the town council to discuss how that project was being pieced together and what the costs were and to a large extent their concern was doing it as cheaply as possible because they were paying for the construction part of it and so we had to really we had to really get down to nuts and bolts discussions about why um, we wouldn't build it that way ourselves and mm -hmm. we had to really explain to the elected officials, not just to the not just to the town manager, what our concerns were, because you know I think I think we ended up spending monies more efficiently, but it cost the cost the town a little bit more than what they up front, had hoped to, hoped to spend it, up front. And, you so know, that's, we, a, that's a big political nut that I think we need to be aware of. Yeah, so. we I, I think we made it clear that we're we're, we're They'd be just like any other developer that would come in that had a project that they wanted wanted us to to participate in as far as taking over. Well, that, yes and no because they aren't just any other developer. <laughs> <laughs> but but that's the way we're looking at it. Yeah. Another developer, they're a developer, and and we're you know right. We're going to accept the, the project. So related to that, do we have a design guideline or specification guideline that we can reference back to? That we apply to all of our projects that we could hold them to. Uh, with regards to pipe work, yes. With regards to pump stations, no. Um, except for his, you know, our historical yeah. 
design standards that we have designed our, ourselves around on our pump stations. Um, I've already had discussions with Wayne and Curran on what we would anticipate, what we um, would require with regards to what the pump station would look like. I mean, I don't think it would hurt us to think about putting mm -hmm. together a standard specification and approving that even before we get to the point where we're doing design so that we can offer that to them as a design basis so they don't go too far afield. Mm -hmm. And I think that addresses the life cycle cost question as well, if we give them preferences for pumps and equipment and so forth. Okay. I can certainly develop some. Either that or you're going to be probably making a lot of changes to the design once you see it. Move on. Move on. Oh. That's my turn. <laughs> so, um, next item is uh, correspondence. Uh, Runford, Maine, a letter we received uh, dated December 17th, 2015. I did include the, that in your packet. Uh, it was from the uh, Runford town manager thanking the district for the used equipment that we had provided. And again, this was uh, some 30 year old pumps that we had. Uh, kick it around that matched their needs and um, they weren't doing anything for us. Um, so it was, I felt, we felt good to be able to help another community out. Any questions? Oh, um, I'm glad they made the uh, good use them. Okay. Um, new business? Old business. Oh, I'm sorry, old business. Unitil Eastern Road meeting. Unitel has requested a one-month delay of the workshop, which is currently scheduled for February. Um, so I will just schedule a new workshop for 6.30 uh, from March, uh, prior, just prior to our regular monthly meeting, I don't think. Um, so, unless I, any other comments on that? And I'll just speak to that. Yeah. <coughs> we're, we're willing to meet in March, but if they don't want to meet in March, that's, yep. that's all right. So. Let's move forward. So yeah. moving on to new business. Actually, uh, oh, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to amend the rules and add an item to the agenda if we could. Oh, yes. Yeah. Second. I'd like to uh, add to the item, add an item to the agenda in recognition of Dave Nelson's 25 years here with the district. That is old business. <laughs> Very old business. <laughs> I think it was 26. How <laughs> 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 do you count? Do we need to vote on it? Yes, we do. Yeah. Yes, you do. I think that's a great idea. We had a motion in the second, I think, didn't we? Any discussion? You can call a vote. <laughs> I think we should have discussion first. No. Oh. All in favor. Oh. Uh, all, in favor. all in favor. <laughs> oh, do we <laughs> discussion? <laughs> oh, discussion. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is just to add the item, so. Oh. Hmm. You're not so no add. discussion? All right. right. So all in oh. favor? <laughs> okay. Any yeah. opposed, Dave? Yes. <laughs> One opposed. Please note that. <laughs> no, I, I, are we going to do a proclamation or something? Uh, roast. Uh, <laughs> roast. <laughs> roast. <laughs> I can get along with that. Right. Now you can go with the discussion. <laughs> okay, discussion. Uh, 25 years, that's a long time. Uh, Would you like a pump station named after you? Uh, no, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> that's no <laughs> idea. We handle enough of that during the week anyway. Be that. Yeah, <laughs> That would, well that would be the memorial. That would be the memorial station. How about a compost pile? <laughs> there you go. That'll work. Yeah, Flip would love that one. Yeah. You know, 25 years is a long time. A quarter of a century on the on the board. Wow. So wow. You up for election this year? Uninterrupted service, right? Yep. Don't ask me yet. <laughs> <laughs> so, <clears throat> does anyone want to? Congratulate Dave, I guess. Yeah, Rose I think Dave. Yeah. the motion on the table. Uh, Dave, obviously, uh, a lot of commitment to the district and the operation of the district over the years. And uh, I guess on, on behalf of everybody here, I'd like to say thank you very much for your service and appreciate all the work you've done and look forward to working with you again and continue on into the future. Thank you very much. Well, thank you. It's uh, highly unexpected. I can say that right at this point in time. So I get this plaque and there's some writing on it. You want me to read that? Can Absolutely. Read that? Is it? Okay, so Scarborough Sanitary District, uh, 
Appreciate, <coughs> appreciation Award presented to David J. Nelson in recognition of sincere appreciation for 25 years of distinguished service on the Scarborough Sanitary District Board of Trustees, 1991 to 2016. 1991 to 2016. Thank you. Thank you all. Uh, let's see. I get the box. I get the box. <laughs> I, I look around and uh, Charlie's been around the longest. We've been through, you know, like a few superintendents. Some good, some not so. It's been uh, very intriguing. I learned a lot of things over the last 25 years, dealing with people and without people and how to work around it. And uh, I think everyone involved in this is quite a surprise. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Chairman. Um, I, I think for most of those 25 years, Dave, you served as the treasurer, haven't you? Um, I think at least 16 or 18. Yeah. So, uh, Commander Costello was a treasurer for uh, quite a fashion, and I can't remember when he got off the board that uh, I moved into that uh, that position. Yeah. It's yeah. Been so. Fair amount of time. So you've kept us out of you've kept us out of trouble. Um, I'm not saying that. On the, uh, I did sign the checks as they come through and uh, check things. Well, out. we haven't had we haven't had any real negative audit reports or no, anything like no, that. No, so you've been no. doing a good job there. Um, I was the superintendent uh, of the district when Dave was first elected as a trustee, uh, and he um, has been very committed. To his role as a as a trustee from the very from the very first day, and um, always had a pretty good awareness and a feel for what's going on in the community. Um, brought good common sense to the table. Always has the interests of the district at heart and the interests of the ratepayers. Um, and I just um, have known have known Dave for that whole 25 years. Um, respect him as a trustee, as a person, and I'm happy to have been able to develop a friendship with him um, and call him a friend. And I think that, uh, you know, if there's a model to public service in uh, in the town of Scarborough, Dave would be one to hold up to that level. So I just wanted to get that officially on the record there. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks. So you were on when I got on, I remember, so... Uh, yeah, it's been <coughs> there've been some rough times over the years, and Dave's always been there. The have been. I've uh, brought some issues up for one gentleman specifically, and it took a while to <laughs> get things uh, put through. And and the killer, uh, two places to my left, was involved in that. But, uh, <laughs> but uh, as, as a whole, that would be, everything that would be that left over there. Uh, <laughs> yeah, just so folks, left. just so folks don't get confused when we watch. <laughs> I'm sorry. My I don't want, I don't want you to my smirch my left, reputation. Anyway. Not, not the viewers left? And no, not the viewers left. No. <laughs> I was thinking that. <laughs> it, it, uh, it, it's been intriguing. You know, uh, I, I have learned a lot. Uh, the people that we've dealt with over the years, and uh, there's been, uh, there've been changes in there. And, and uh, I can always remember at least two votes ahead of Bud whenever we were up for re-election. <laughs> and, uh, and, the, and the best part of it is looking at the employees in the district, the lack of change, which really impresses me uh, for the amount of time that they've been there and what they've put forward for the whole thing, uh, especially with one era where it was nip and tuck whether we were going to have anyone working there at all. Uh, it's been very straightforward. They've been upright, uh, the highest professionals that I think we've seen. And it shows because this is, and I've always deemed it the, the best district in the state of Maine, and I'll lay at is probably in the top two in the Northeast from what I've seen around. It's run excellent. Yeah, that's all to the employees. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's been a pleasure, no question about it. 
and uh, I've always stated that uh, you know in my line of business you stay with your strong suit and I think I can say that's why I've been in the district for the last 25 years <laughs> <laughs> so as part of this award you get to buy rounds after that no problem <laughs> <laughs> you're having a diet coke <laughs> or maybe some Sebago Lake water I don't know <laughs> We, appre we appreciate all you've done for the district, Dave. Again, thank you. Uh, totally caught by surprise. Oh. Obviously. Nobody let the cat out caught of the bag. Caught me by surprise there for a minute. I, was <laughs> <laughs> I forgot you were still under old, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> thanks, Ben. Thanks, ben. Um, That's okay. I still have more hair than you do. <laughs> uh, but, but mine's not gray yet. That's all right. You did a good day job. <laughs> <laughs> this is when the roast starts. So we, we, better, <laughs> think it might. We, we better move on to new business here. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Dave. Thank you very much. So, uh, heavy duty service truck bids. On January 19th, we opened bids for the replacement of our mechanics truck. A total of 13 requests were sent out, um, two bids were received. Um, Acceptable bids were for a Ford XLT F450 or a Dodge SLE for 4500 <coughs> with a Reading utility body. The lowest net bid with <coughs> trade-in value was for $50,036 from Central Maine Dodge. Our approved budget for this truck was $65,000. I recommend award of this bid to Central Maine Dodge. Uh, the second bidder was uh, Lee Dodge. Um, and uh, they actually only provided a base bid of 38,876 without the utility body. Um, Reading had provided us uh, uh, a budget for the utility body, and Central Maine Dodge just carried that same number through, and I add, so I added that to the lead Dodge uh, bid, and they, and they came in at $52,111 uh, with, with that added to it. Um, and then there were several, many dealers that chose not to bid. Uh, we received no bids from any Ford dealers. Um, <laughs> what ended up happening is Ford's um, uh, XLT F450, they actually just went out of production. Um, they're retooling for the 2017s already. It's, and it's, a, new, it's a redesigned truck. So it was. They really, they didn't have a truck to, to bid, so that's why no Fords were bid. We, it was unbeknownst to us when we went out. So, uh, with that, I re recommend award of this bid to Central Maine Dodge. So moved. Seconded. Any questions on the bids? Uh, I just had a question. The Ford, the Ford, is the Ford body on the F450, is that an aluminum body also? Like the F-150 is? it may be when they come back out with When it. they come, the, the, the current one is not. Yeah. And so they won't be back in production again until March, April? Until 2017, next year. Yeah, um, I only, I think it's fall is when they're, the 2017s are targeted to start okay. coming out. Yep, thank you. See no other questions, all in favor of the, the bid? Yes. Moving on to Asset Management Planning Committee. It has been discussed that an Asset Management Committee be created to help formalize the development of a plan. We are look, um, I'm looking for two trustees to sit on this committee to work with uh, myself. Once the committee is formed, we'll start meeting to develop the Asset Management Plan. I re request uh, the nomination of two trustees to this committee. I volunteered last time, so I'll volunteer again. I nominate Mr. Garrison. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> How about nominating Nick Rico also? Huh? How about nominating Nick Rico also? And I <laughs> nominate Mr. Rico. I'll second those nominations. Thank you, Mr. McSorley. Seeing no other nominations, um, we'll take a motion. I don't know if we need a motion for the. You have a motion. You have, have a motion. motion. You have a motion. But do we need a. Yeah. I don't agree with it. Okay, so I'll take a vote on that. All in favor of. The committee. I want to discuss my motion. I'm disgusted with his motion. Okay, and uh, Dave will take care of the arrangements for setting up a, a first meeting on that. 
Uh, the next one, item C, is the 12 month budget. No, wait, I'm skipping the asset management planning. No, oh, no, we got we that. that one. I guess we'll check on it. So then the uh, 12 month budget summary. Uh, the 12 month budget summary is included in your packet. Um, close out the year uh, under budget. Uh, I recommend approval. So uh, motion to approve, Mr. Chairman. Second. Any questions on the budget? Just, just one question on the on the year end number. Um, I didn't go back and look at it, Dave. I thought you might know off the top of your head um, how we actually turned out based on uh, compared to what you had projected in our in our uh, 2017 budget. I had looked at it, and Wendy and I had looked at it, and I can't remember off the top of my head. I think we were actually very close. We were. Okay. Yeah. Um, within a hundred thousand or two hundred thousand, maybe. There were only three accounts that um, most of them came in under. There were three accounts that I think went a little over, but overall we came in under what you had predicted. What I had projected. Okay. Yeah. So basically, two hundred fifty-two thousand eight hundred ninety dollars was the remaining balance of our two thousand sixteen budget, and that you had that's close to what you had reflected as being applied to the two thousand seventeen budget. Actually, we got it right here um, in the minutes from last month. Uh, Year-end projection on the very back page. Uh, where am I here? Two point two. Three point two eight. Three point two eight was our year-end projection for 2015, and we came in at. Year to date budget is three point four four, so two hundred thousand dollars over. That kind of was around two hundred thousand. So are you are we going to do an official transfer of that those funds over to the fixed asset account? With the the excess budget, the difference between budgeted and we have never done that in the past. It just automatically goes carries over, right? I don't know. What would you be doing with that money? <laughs> <laughs> that money roll that money rolls into our will roll into our operating budget yeah. if it's operating funds and if it was money that was allocated from the capital improvement uh, reserve, yeah. then it would it would remain in that in Correct. that fund. Yeah. So it there's remains. no there's no action necessary by okay. us. Yeah. Yeah. Um, did we get a vote on it? Uh, did we get a motion already? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Any other questions on the budget? All in favor? Let's the budget. Public comments, no public today. Uh, trustee comments. We could start with Jason. Uh, made comments earlier, but uh, again, congratulations to Dave and thanks again for all your service. Nick? I'll echo those comments. Thank you, Dave, for 25 years of your hard <coughs> work on the board. I appreciate that. Um, I also appreciate you and your work as treasurer. You've done a great job keeping us a nonprofit. <laughs> yeah, I have the same <laughs> thoughts. Congratulations, and thank you very much. Charlie? Uh, good job, Dave. I hope, you, uh, I hope you have another 25 good years before... Uh, we have to look at filling your seat for someone else. <laughs> Rob? Well, as one of the younger trustees on the board, I, <laughs> I got something to aspire to here. Um, it's been, in my five years, it's been very educational. And I have to say, uh, extremely entertaining. Um, thank you very much for your service and uh, continued service. Before Dave speaks, I think the other Dave wanted to. I just yeah. wanted to um, thank uh, Dave for the time that I've worked for, uh, under him with regards to that as a superintendent and also as uh, the district's engineer. It's uh, always been a pleasure. Um, I've always learned a lot from him. I've always um, appreciated his experience and knowledge. Um, you know, I, I, I just can't say enough about working with him over the over the number of years that I have been involved in the district, both as their superintendent and as their engineer. So I just wanted to thank you for that. Dave? I'd like to <coughs> thank you all. Uh, 
Charlie, your comment about 25 more years, I did some quick math. Uh, <laughs> I don't think that's going to happen. Uh, Rob, we like to keep you chuckling at times with some comments, and uh, as with all, uh, I really have enjoyed being here in the last 25 years. Uh, like I say, there have been a few meetings where it hasn't been that enjoyable, you know, when the trio was working in here against all common sense and common values. Uh, but again, it was always a learning experience. I can remember Mr. Costello uh, saying a number of times, uh, four to three, you lose. <laughs> and, uh, it, uh, it you know, brought things into perspective after uh, some rather heated meetings. And it and, uh, goes back to the one meeting where uh, Mr. Waldron was chairman, and it started out very exciting out in the hallway and ended up extremely more exciting when... Uh, you had to get a new gavel, that Oh, well, the, the gavel <laughs> came in two pieces that after that evening, yes. And, uh, of course, we had uh, one of Scarborough's finest come in and, and ask if everything was all right. And, and I said yes, and his face was uh, as red as a beet. And, and he said, well, is it is it probably an improper time to see if I can get hooked up to the sewer? You know? <laughs> <laughs> Jason knows him very well. I think his, his first name was Jeff and his last name was equal to Jason's. Uh, but there have been some very, very good times and it's been very intriguing. And I thank each and every one of you for your comments and the plaque. Uh, I think it's undeserved myself, but it's just me. <laughs> well, they, <clears throat> I've, I think I've been on 20 years, I think. Is it, no, no it'll, be, it'll be 21 when I, get, after, when I finish this term. but. Uh, yeah, Dave's always been a pleasure to work with, and a fair, I've been a fair person and a, uh, uh, a good person. So I, I, I've enjoyed working with you over the years, and uh, thank you, Dave. Again, I thank you. Thank everyone involved in this. It, it, it's a pleasure. Really, it is. So if we get a motion, motion to adjourn, we can head down and have a beer. Second. <laughs> Well, I have my credit card then, so we're all set. <laughs> <laughs> yeah.